Vampires. The very mention of this word would bring to your mind a gothic scenery, an ancient castle in the middle, bats hovering over it, and a pale moon in the backdrop. Such is the cultural phenomenon that it's turned out to be in the past century. This cultural influence has been felt far and wide across the globe, and the anime industry is no exception. In this video, we've compiled a list of 40 anime vampires, each of whom has left their mark on viewers and victims alike. So, without further ado, let's get started. Chizuna, Lament of the Lamb Generally, vampires are known to have a pale complexion and an unquenchable thirst for blood, and Chizuna Takashiro has both the attributes. She's the elder sister of Kazuna, the protagonist of Lament of the Lamb. In case you're confused, the series also goes by the name of Sheep Song. Anyway, let's continue with Chizuna. Having had cravings for blood since her childhood, Chizuna was diagnosed with vampirism at a very early age. Turns out, this is the curse of the Takashiro family that's been passed down from one generation to the next for centuries. In the case of Chizuna, the vampirism streak was passed down to her by her mother, and coincidentally Kazuna too falls prey to this curse during his adolescence. So, does this curse bestow any sort of power or ability on Chizuna? To be frank, the vampirism doesn't really enhance Chizuna's physical or intellectual capabilities. However, unlike vampires in general, she's immune to sunlight. Although she calls herself a vampire, she can go out during the daytime to attend school like a normal human teenager. But yes, it's implied several times in the manga that Chizuna could control Kazuna with the help of her blood. Whenever Kazuna suffered from a violent attack, Chizuna would slash her arm so that he could consume her blood. This way, she'd inadvertently have a huge influence on Kazuna's mind, especially his thoughts regarding his own survival and sustenance. Well, while the undertones are quite perverted, Chizuna's vampirism turns into one of the major themes of the series. But speaking of manipulators, we have quite a specimen coming up in a while. For now, let's move on to another popular teenage vampire. Megumi Shimizu Shiki Next, we have the charming yet chaotic Megumi Shimizu. The main antagonist in Shiki, Megumi is initially introduced as a boisterous and proud teenager who complains about her life in the countryside. However, things take a dire turn when Megumi suddenly passes away due to anemia and eventually heart failure. While her family and her only friend Kaori mourn her death, the pink-haired youth is suddenly resurrected from the dead. However, she does come back as a Shiki a vampirish entity that possesses immortality and preys on other human beings for blood. Ashiki also tends to have certain unique powers and abilities. For instance, in the case of Megumi, she can control people's minds and persuade them to take certain actions, sometimes against their own will. Now, you might be wondering how Megumi turned into a bloodthirsty manipulative entity. The fun fact is she never got bitten or infected by another Shiki. In fact, Megumi's transformation was an absolute miracle. One of the many ways in which a human being can be resurrected into a Shiki is one's desire to live a better life. And there's no one with such a strong passion for life as Megumi ever had. Her immense hatred for Satoba, the place where she's lived all her life, stemmed from her utmost desire to live in the city and thrive in urban cultures. This was enough for her corporeal form to transform into that of a Shiki, so that she could fulfill her own aspirations. While Megumi's death was inevitable in the series, her resurrection still remains one of the most enigmatic incidents in Shiki. Rufus Glenn, Mars Red Ranking at number 38, we have the genius manipulator and trickster Rufus Glenn, a blonde-haired Scottish vampire. Rufus Glenn is a secondary character in Mars Red who built quite a reputation for himself. Although there's barely any information regarding his past, Glenn left quite an impression as the conspirator with General Nakajima, a person with zero remorse and not a shred of conscience. Glenn sees himself as an opportunist who only looks out for himself. And well, that's exactly why he betrayed Nakajima, so that he could gain absolute power, his ultimate dream. Having gained notoriety for bringing the entire military under his control, Glenn momentarily became one of the series' strongest characters until his pride eventually destroyed him. After all, pride is one of the signature attributes of vampires themselves. They're proud of being superior to the lowly human race. And this implies how powerful Glenn is as a bloodthirsty entity. He's bestowed with superhuman strength, stamina, as well as agility. Although he does rely on blood consumption for sustenance, the source of Glenn's power stems from his superior intellect. Yes, he can get on your nerves on multiple occasions, but you must admit that his intellect goes beyond the ordinary, which means the vampire ordinary kind of level. Glenn's foresight and ability to manipulate events in his own favor is indeed remarkable. In addition to that, Glenn's power to mimic people's voices has helped him to up his game even more. Hence, it wouldn't be possible to begin this list without talking about the Scottish trickster, who's often dubbed by fans as the vampire version of the Joker. Allegro, Vampire in the Garden At number 37, we have the white-haired youth, Allegro. 
Although a supporting character in the series, many fans perceive Allegro as significant to the progression of the plot. He's soft and doesn't hesitate to shred his gentle facade when his loved ones are in danger. As Prince of the Vampires and caretaker of Queen Fine, Allegro is depicted as a warm-hearted individual who hopes to nurse Fine back to health. Now, coming to his powers and abilities. Given that he is of vampire royalty, Allegro has a set of powers that's typical of the true bloods. This includes supernatural senses, especially his olfactory and auditory capabilities. This enables him to track down his targets solely on the basis of his own senses. Besides the usual superhuman strength and speed, Allegro also seems to have the power to manipulate the flow of diseases and poison. This means he can make sure that he's not harmed by pathogens released by his enemies. Although his intellectual prowess is not of the same level as that of Rufus Glenn, Allegro's superiority over him can be judged solely by his weapon mastery. Allegro's expertise in using different kinds of weapons, particularly melee weapons, is nothing short of brilliant. Perhaps his duties and responsibilities as a prince have shaped him into the person he is today. Cassandra Jill Warlock – Black Blood Brothers Ranked at number 36, we have the infamous Black Snake. Cassandra Jill Warlock is the main antagonist of Black Blood Brothers, a reincarnation of Morgan the Witch. Cassandra, or Cass's enmity with Jiro, began on the day she betrayed him and killed his beloved, Alice. While her mission has always been to resurrect the Kowloon King and make sure that his bloodline survives, Cassa does confess later in the series that the only time she found solace and happiness was in the company of Jiro and Alice. So, how powerful is the Black Snake of the Warlock family? Let's find out. When it comes to powers and abilities, being an antagonist has its share of perks. Although they're supposed to be defeated by the protagonist anyway, antagonists often boast an awe-inspiring skill set, and Kassa is no exception. She wields a silver chain knife and a katana at all times. Yep, you heard it right, a vampire wielding a silver chain knife. <laughs> Ironic, ain't it? Well, Black Blood Brothers is full of such surprises, but yes, moving on. Kassa's major ability is that of shape-shifting. She can transform herself into any kind of person at her own will and thus keep her identity secret. However, another ability that Kassa is seen to inhabit is the Eye Raid. It's an offshoot of hypnosis that allows Kassa to hide her true self from others by creating illusions in their minds. But is she powerful enough to defeat the next vampire on this list? Miyu, Vampire Princess Miyu. At number 35, we have the titular protagonist of the series. The series traces Princess Miyu's adventures to send back god demons known as Shinma to the darkness, their own realm. As a human Shinma hybrid herself, Miyu was born a vampire and awakened as the guardian of the human race. Before she turns 15, Miyu endeavors to fulfill her duty to evict the evil demons from the mortal world for the sake of her close ones. So, how strong is our petite vampire princess? To be frank, the trope of vampires as protectors has not been as popular as their antagonistic roles in the past. Having said that, Princess Miyu is bestowed with powers that are quite brutal and deadly, to say the least. In terms of her appearance, Princess Miyu seems to look like an adolescent girl. While her beauty is indeed unparalleled, she's actually very old, perhaps over hundreds of years, thanks to her vampirism. Besides her eternal youth, Princess Miyu is capable of teleporting herself from one place to another by opening interdimensional portals to traverse different worlds. Her signature powers, however, is the use of fire attacks. Princess Miyu is capable of inflicting harm on god demons with the help of pyro-based attacks, which help her to send them back to the darkness. While she doesn't have shape-shifting abilities like Kassa, Princess Miyu does have a formidable set of powers to defeat the Black Snake of the Warlock family. However, that'll not be enough to subdue the next vampire on the list. Tsubaki Servam we have Tsubaki, one of the most charismatic vampire villains on our list. Considered as the one who should not have been born, Tsubaki is an important character in Servam. Although his physical and intellectual prowess is not that remarkable, he makes up for it as a brilliant tactician. His battle experience is far superior when compared with the likes of his subclass. And speaking of his subclass, Tsubaki has the ability to withstand sunlight, one of the biggest threats to vampires per se. This indeed is a remarkable ability for a bloodthirsty entity whose race is known for its vulnerability toward the sun. Besides this, Tsubaki also shares attributes similar to those of his fellow Servamps. This includes the ability to change from his human form to animal form at will. In the case of Tsubaki, his animal form is that of a black two-tailed fox that's capable of speaking like a human being. Another powerful ability in his arsenal is being able to generate a katana from his right hand under the yukata that he wears all the time. The red camellia flowers further add to the lethal nature of the black sword, thus adding a red aura to it. His swordsmanship skills are simply unmatched. His dexterity with the katana is nothing short of perfection. Moreover, he can produce more than one katana and control them in mid-air. Such is the fighting capability of a vampire who lacks physical strength. Surprising, isn't it? Well, wait until you see the next one on this list. Migiri, Bloodsucker, The Legend of Zipangu 
At number 33, we have the notorious Yato no Kami, aka Migiri. First introduced in Volume 1 of the manga as a bloodthirsty entity brought from the dead, Migiri is the lord god of the vampire race that plagues mankind across the globe. His resurrection, performed by his loyal servant Kuraha, is immediately followed by the sacrifice of Kikuri, a young girl who's been abducted for Migiri so that he can unite with the contemporary reincarnation of Camellia, his beloved. In actuality, Kikuri is the love interest of Yasuke, the protagonist of Bloodsucker. From here on begins the conflict between the world's most ancient vampire and a hot-headed hero with a mysterious ancestry. So, how powerful is Migiri? Let's find out. His base powers consist of immortality, regenerative capabilities, superhuman strength, agility, and endurance. However, what makes Migiri a unique vampire character is his swordsmanship. Migiri wields a powerful katana that's further aided by his phenomenal speed and reflexes. In his first face-off against Yasuke in the first volume, we get a glimpse of Migiri's brilliant display of power as he slices off Yasuke's arm holding the pistol. This speaks volumes of his battle experience, particularly combat. Most importantly, Migiri is a wonderful tactician. While he's aware of his weakness toward the sun, Volume 12 depicts how Migiri plans to exploit his regenerative power so that he can withstand the sun and go head-to-head -head against Yusuke. And speaking of non-human entities, we have a famous 90s character from a sci-fi film coming up next. Chimera. Chimera. An extraterrestrial vampire that stirred quite a bit of controversy back in 1996, Chimera is a memorable character in the genre of alien horror anime. With their heterochromatic eyes and androgynous appearance, Chimera's first encounter with Osamu gives us a glimpse of their abilities. Let's uh, delve into them, one by one. Firstly, Chimera is capable of sharing telepathic connections with another individual via physical touch, such as a kiss, in Osamu's case. While the glass partition was the only thing separating the two when they shared the first kiss, Kimera was still able to let Osamu into their mind. This is how Osamu was able to locate Kimera in Dr. Gibson's facility, where she was locked up for further study. Moreover, Osamu came to know about Kimera's past life, how they refused to take people's lives for the sake of drinking blood and often pleaded to Keanu to kill them instead. However, as we come to know later on, the Chimera that Osamu meets merely possesses the appearance and past memories of the original Chimera. This is proved in one particular scene where two strange men take her to a hotel for coitus, only to be turned into husks after Chimera absorbs their blood entirely. Hence, this new Chimera is actually known to their alien race as the Mother System, a living entity that's capable of conceiving their offspring. Given the fact that Chimera is a hermaphrodite and both Keanu and Ginzu like any male reproductive organs, the androgynous entity is immediately attached to Osamu. Besides these, Another important ability that Chimera seems to have is that of teleportation. When Osamu, Jay, and Chimera get caught in the crossfire among Ginzu, Keanu, and the military, Chimera suddenly starts rising upward, only to emanate a strong, glittering aura until they disappear completely. And finally, not every person Chimera bites turns into a husk, as shown toward the end of the OVA adaptation. As Osamu and Chimera drive toward an unknown destination, the last few scenes include a close-up of Osamu's neck, which now bears their bite marks. Yet, Osamu functions like a normal human being. This implies that Chimera uses her fangs according to their intentions, which is why Osamu doesn't end up as a lifeless husk like the two strange men back in the hotel. While the OVA received a backlash for the poor visualization of Chimera's character, it goes without saying that it's an unconventional sci-fi yaoi classic with a dash of the vampire trope. With this, we come to the 31st vampire on our list, Lord Ruthven, the case study of Vanitas. This is an important character who prefers to work in the shadows. After all, instigators and manipulators sometimes enjoy tugging at the strings from behind the stage, and that's exactly how Lord August Ruthven turns out to be in the story. Lord Ruthven is better known for his political endeavors, especially in resolving the war between humans and vampires by bringing them together. Yet, at the same time, his affiliations with Charlatan do make it obvious that he endorses Nania's attempts to spread Malnomen far and wide. To define it briefly, Malnomen refers to a group of afflictions due to which the victims, usually vampires, turn into curse bearers. So, how does Lord Ruthven appear in this equation? Before we answer that question, let's set down the basic attributes he has already. This includes immortality, superhuman strength, agility, healing, as well as endurance. However, Lord Ruthven does have a special ability that coincides with the interests of the charlatan, spreading curses. In other words, Lord Ruthven is capable of putting a curse on anyone and guaranteeing their death if they try to go against him. This is made evident when Lord Ruthven curses No to follow his instructions loyally. This was immediately followed by a black hue encircling around his neck in the shape of a leash. This special ability of his is a direct reference to the original Lord Ruthven in John William Polidori's The Vampire, 
viewed as the first story that introduced the idea of vampires into English literature. Like the original, crimson-haired, one-eyed Lord Ruthven in the anime too has the same power, which makes him one of the most formidable characters in this video. But we still have a long way to go, so stay tuned for the next one. Saya Otonashi – Blood – The Last Vampire – Blood Plus the main protagonist of Blood Plush is an entirely different league. Saya Otonashi looks human from the outset when, in actuality, she is the firstborn of the Chiropteran mummy. This means she can change into a Chiropteran who derives strength by drinking blood. That makes Saya a vampirish entity. So, who exactly is she? Like most vampire characters, Saya is immortal. She appears as a teenage girl when she is, in reality, over 170 years old. However, her bloodthirsty tendency never gets the best of her. As a matter of fact, Saya makes a conscious effort to not consume human blood for the sake of her strength. While that results in her being not as strong as Diva, who is her sibling and the main antagonist in the series, Saya compensates for it with her skill set. Besides her swordsmanship, Saya has superhuman senses and can also communicate with her sister telepathically. Another remarkable power Saya has is her phenomenal healing prowess. Not only can she regenerate her own health immediately, but Saya can also help recover those around her. However, given the fact that she's a queen of pure blood, she can turn any individual she gives her blood to into her chevalier. Interestingly, Saya switches into what's known as the berserk mode whenever she consumes the blood of a chevalier, such as that of Hargis. This enhances her abilities to the extent that she turns into a violent and aggressive entity, driven by pure rage. However, she does share a unique ability with Diva, but it's detrimental to each other's survival. If either of them is infected by their sister's blood, theirs will crystallize immediately, which would harm them immensely. Yet, the most surprising aspect of Saya's physiology as a Chiropteran is the fact that she tends to hibernate for 30 years and comes back to her senses for a couple of years, only to go back to sleep for three more decades. This unusual tendency suggests the possible power drainage that Saya must replenish in order to strengthen her own powers, particularly her healing ability. Well, that would make things quite complicated if the protagonist herself dozes off for 30 years. Hmm, don't you think so? Alucard, Rosario, plus Vampire Perhaps the most powerful entity in the world of Rosario and Vampire, Alucard is the oldest vampire of the Shinzo blood who hoped to wipe out humanity off the face of the planet until he was sealed away by Akasha Blood River. While Alucard's true form is human-like, he eventually evolves into a monstrous creature after consuming a lot of Ayashi, and in the process, gains all their powers. So, what are his powers and abilities? Hmm? Alucard's gigantic stature entails an unfathomable degree of strength and endurance. At the same time, his stamina is unmatched due to the lack of fatigue toxins from his dense musculature. However, his actual strength stems from his Shinzo bloodline. Prior to his revival, Alucard was already known to possess the Yokai absorption ability. This means he's capable of absorbing any monster and then gaining its powers. Besides, as the progenitor of the vampire race and with Akasha's blood mixed with his, Alucard's revival through his clone resulted in several enhancements. For instance, he's capable of influencing those who bear his and Akasha's blood. Also, he can release tentacle-like limbs from his physique to absorb food, aka other monsters or human beings. On top of that, Alucard possesses an incredible healing prowess that renders cuts and slashes non-permanent, sparing him from lasting damage. However, he can't regenerate body parts that are instantly obliterated, and it goes without saying that Alucard is almost immortal due to his undying Shinzo body. While it might seem like an advantage, Alucard sees it more as a bane to his existence. But what does the next character think about immortality? Let's see. Kuromitsu Kurozuka In 12th century Japan, a warrior meets a beautiful woman named Kuromitsu and falls head over heels for her. But beneath her slender body and innocent face lies a terrible secret. She is a blood-sucking vampire, capable of lifting a grown man and crushing his throat with bare hands. Kurozuka is based on a novel of the same name written by Baku Yumamakura. The plot revolves around Kuro, who's fled from the forest to escape his ruthless brother, out for his blood. There, he meets Kuromitsu, a beautiful vampire, and falls in love with her. But things don't go as planned for the lovers and an organization called the Red Army decapitates Kuro. He was in the process of turning into a vampire, so even after getting his head chopped off, he doesn't die and wakes up centuries later in a post-apocalyptic world. Here, the Red Army is still in action and is hunting his love Kuromitsu for her blood, which can make someone immortal. But Kuromitsu is no damsel in distress. She can put up a fight, and in her bad mood, one is advised to maintain a proper distance from her, as she's capable of quite a lot of vampire violence. Kuromitsu's character is the mirror of society's perversion, as she receives pain, deception, contempt, and fury from others without provocation, and eventually deduces that immortality or the length of one's life doesn't define happiness. A happy life doesn't necessarily have to be big. Aristarch Rory, the third, D. Greyman. 
One of the central characters in the D. Grey Man, Aristar Crory III, is a quiet, soft, and kind hearted vampire. <laughs> Don't let that fool you. He also possesses the innocence which turns him into one of the most lethal and bone chilling exorcists. Alan and Larvi first encounter Aristar on their vampire hunting expedition. Unfortunately for Crory, Alan found out that the woman he was in love with, Eliade, was a level 2 Akuma. Torn between his responsibility and personal feelings, he finally kills her with his own hands. Or should we say, his teeth. Hmm, more like fangs. Yeah. Yep, once the innocence powers up, there's nothing or no one that can stop him from ripping into his enemies, and his teeth were the first to change, his innocence residing in them. They swiftly elongate and become sharper than any blade, and stronger too. On one occasion, Crory stopped Larvi's hammer with his bare teeth. Imagine trying to stop a mere punch with your teeth. Pretty sure all of us will be missing at least two teeth. Aristar has typical vampiric features like pale skin, pointed ears and nose, long hair with white strands covering half of his face, and a tall, lean frame. But as soon as his teeth sense an Akuma nearby, all of this turns into a feral, almost mad hatter-like appearance. He bulks up, and the whites of his eyes turn pure black while the irises turn a dull yellow color. One look from them will have you peeing your pants. But perhaps the most nightmarish form is Bloody Crory. One of Aristar's abilities is to drain his body entirely of his blood to take the form of a grotesque gargoyle-like mannequin without the ugliness. Because even in his ultimate monstrous form, Aristar Crory III is still dangerously attractive. During his battle with Jazdevi, Bloody Crory makes an appearance, much to the dismay of the latter, and a little too close for comfort. In that shot, we can see the winged Crory in all its glory. Blood-red muscular frame, hooded eyes the color of pink flesh, snake-like tongue, and a face that eerily resembles the Joker. In this form, Crory is at his most primal behavior, running on pure brute strength and decimating everything in his path. Yeah, wouldn't want to be the one standing in this guy's path when he's in a battle frenzy. Maya Link, Vampire Hunter D, Bloodlust. Noble and vampire, two words that do not mix. But Vampire Hunter D, Bloodlust has one such character, and it's none other than Baron Maya Link. Part of the greater noble, Link comes from a line of powerful vampires. But even so, his lineage makes him a step above the other nobles, and so does his deadliness. Possessing the signature metal claw that his whole family is known for, Maya Link is quite the master at the transmutation of matter. Although he screams vampire, it's hard not to drool at the sight of the thousand-year-old vampire, with his long white ponytail and red eyes which are surprisingly soft, an equally pale face, tall and well-built. Link surely cuts a dashing figure in his elegant black clothing, completing the ensemble is his long cape. All of these features stay like this in the presence of his human lover, Charlotte Elborn. Threaten him or his loved ones and you'd wish those red eyes wouldn't be the last things you see. A skilled fighter, he doesn't dawdle around, preferring to go for clean, neat strokes, meaning you'd be dead before your brain even figures out that you are dead. Hmm? Uh. And of course, his gauntlet. The metal claw is his preferred choice of weapon, but his cloak comes in handy as well particularly when he wants to confuse the enemy or defend himself. But probably the scariest ability is Link's empathy. The handsome Baron can make you feel things you wouldn't want to. And we're uh, not talking about those naughty ones. Hmm? Think more on a suicidal or guilty level, and as such, he only uses them in dire situations. Remember how all the crosses that come in his line of vision are destroyed? Yeah, that's Link working his Jedi mind tricks. Kazutaka Muraki, Descendants of Darkness Dr. Kazutaku Muraki, the primary villain of Descendants of Darkness, is a monster in every sense of the word. With no sympathy, compassion, or regard for human life, it's not sure just what kind of a creature Muraki is. The good doc is thought to be a human hybrid or an energy vampire. Different instances point to these. For instance, Muraki erases the memories of Hisoka Kurosaki, or turns a dead girl into a zombie. Or the worst, when he feeds off the Guardian of Death, Asato Tuzuzuki. But none of these exactly paint how monstrous the platinum blonde scientist really is. In stark contrast to his innocent appearance, Muraki views humans as dolls, existing for him to use and throw. This obsession began in his childhood and courtesy of his mother. It was also during this period that Kazutaka found out he had a stepbrother, Saki, a product of an illicit affair. You can imagine the relationship those two had. Anyway, this half-brother was killed and it's in pursuit of reviving him that Meraki has donned the hat of a more crazed Victor Frankenstein. But do not be mistaken, Kazutaka only wants to bring Saki back to life so that he can kill him with his own hands. <laughs> Cold enough for you all yet? Determined in his goal, he conducts extensive research to create an immortal body. It's in this process that he learns of Tuzuzuki from his grandfather's notes. He conducts experiments illegally on humans in the hopes of catching the attention of Shinigami, or should we say, 
Asato. The aforementioned Kurosaki was also a victim of the doctor. The poor boy was raped before his memories were erased with a curse. Not satisfied with the brutality, Moraki finished him off with a terminal illness. Assigned as a partner to Suzuki, the 16-year-old became a Shinigami upon his death. Part of Kazutaka's abilities is to summon creatures, and in such a scenario, the cruel doctor forces him to recall the cursed knight. His silver eyes and mechanical blue eyes only add to his sadistic barbarian evilness. So, would you book an appointment with this deceptively charming doctor? Kane Dressel, Valverave, the Liberator. Kane Dressel, the charismatic yet calculating commander of the Dorsia Military Pack Federation, is the next on the list. A Magius. Dressel is a combination of wit and ruthless strength that makes him the perfect leader. But his calm exterior reveals nothing of what goes on in his mind. He taught El Elf everything he knows. And we already know how skilled he is. El Elf is in fact the strongest Dorsian soldier, but in front of Dressel, he's still a pup. Being a Magius means that Kane has much more powers than he lets on, and that alone is enough to terrify the badder soldier that El Elf is. Seeing as how Magius requires runes for survival, it also gives them supernatural abilities as well. And one of these is the light of rune that animates a Valve Rave without actually being in it. As skilled as Dressel is in unarmed combat, he's equally good with simply a knife, as is clear from the flashback in episode 17, wherein he wipes an entire terrorist army to save H. Noon and X. Ainz. Another interesting fact is that Kane Dressel is in fact a who's possessed the original Kane. You know, the um, first murderer in the Bible. The one who killed his peace-loving brother, Abel? <laughs> yeah, that one. Goes a long way to show why this 2.0 Kane doesn't so much as even blink an eye when going apeshit to succeed in his goals. Haruto does kill the blonde smirking commander in the final battle. So, guess you don't have to worry too much about a green alien clamping down on your jugular. Or worse, get jacked. Ferret Bathory, Seraph of the End. Not your typical brooding, blood-sucking vampire. Ferid Bathory is a vampire who's turned at a young age, but even when he was a human child, Bathory showcased sadistic and psychopathic behaviors, often having a misconstrued notion of love. Apparently, this craziness transpired to his vampire side as well. Sired by Sato, Ferid once announces that he loves his papa, and so has come to kill him. He'd be the perfect partner for Harley Quinn. Who knows, maybe she is his beloved. Hmm. Yet, Lord Bathory's taste for children might not be something Quinn approves. A vampire? He needs blood to keep himself sane. But Ferid loves the blood of young kids. At one point, he even went to the extent of gathering beautiful boys and girls to fill his mansion for him to use and discard as he pleases. But his apparent interest lasts only as long as he remembers the child's name. And this is coming from a vampire who possesses a remarkable memory. A predator in every sense of the word, Ferid is equally accomplished in sword fights, although that piece of pointy metal is rarely needed. One swipe of his hand neatly slices through flesh and bone. It must be because he's lived thousands of years, Bathory also has a fetish for elaborate and dramatical murder plans. Cunning and intelligent, he manipulates and twists situations to suit his needs, and by the time his victims realize their folly, it'll be too late. They'd already be on their way to a slow, tormented death that Ferid Bathory thoroughly enjoys. So, if you see a slender, tall, red-eyed vampire with long silver hair and impeccably dressed in ruffles, coat, and cape, we'd suggest you turn back immediately, because once you get caught by the silver-tongued lord, there's no escape. Roa Tsukihime The blonde-haired, kind-hearted priest that Michael Roa Valdemjong once was is nothing more than a whisper now. A highly skilled and intelligent vampire, Roa is known by many names and bodies. The most prominent, of course, is the Serpent of Akasha and the Infinite Reincarnator, which is pretty self-explanatory. A dead apostle ancestor, Roa took advantage of the strongest true ancestor, Arquaid Brunestud, to skip all the necessary steps that had put him at the top of the hierarchy. Like a clever puppeteer, Roa couldn't care less about the trail of bodies he leaves to achieve his goal. Although he gets killed each time by Arquaid, that doesn't stop him from reincarnating again in a body that suits his purpose, which is always a perfect balance of wealth and power. Whatever positive qualities he may have possessed when a human gets destroyed with each reincarnation. Moreover, Baldum Jong is not in the slightest worried about the body that he takes over as soon as he manifests. His cold-blooded and bloodthirsty will is forced on the host and he or she is helpless in his hands. It doesn't matter if you're a sibling, relative, or friend, Roa always crushes everything and everyone in his quest for ultimate power. Mina Tepes Dance in the Vampire Bund Wilhelmina Vlad Mina Tepes, simply known as Mina Tepes, is the princess and ruler of all vampires in the Dance in the Vampire Bund, and as such, the main protagonist. Having lost her mother at a young age, little Mina was forced to awaken her vampire power at around 10 years old. 
This form of a school-going girl is what Mina prefers to get around with instead of her true form, a voluptuous adult woman who will have you drooling at her feet. But this also keeps her safe from the three nobles who, under the guise of protecting royal lineage, would love to have their way with her and turn her into nothing more than a breeding machine. Born from the true vampire, Mina possesses incredible and supreme supernatural abilities. While she isn't as horrific as some of the above ones, Princess Tepes can be downright nasty if and when forced into a corner. And God forbid if somebody threatens or harms her loved ones. Aside from the usual vampiric abilities like enhanced strength, agility, rapid healing and others, Mina, in her true form, which she only uses for the most dire of situations, can form something of an armor of bones that barely covers her sides and front. A stunningly beautiful woman, Tepes in her true form is practically naked, and that's enough to distract anyone. She also inherited the mind control ability, called the Mystic Eyes of Charms, controlling and manipulating anyone under her command, courtesy of her Vlad bloodline. Until and unless you get close to her werewolf bodyguard lover Akira, Princess Mina will welcome you with open hands. A gentle, pure-born vampiress, if you will. Rido Kuran, Vampire Knight Rido Kuran, the head of the Kuran family, is nauseating as he is charming. A pure-blood vampire, he has all the abilities they possess with an extra little, wielding an anti-vampire sword with the use of his blood as a weapon. He can also transfer his soul into another while retaining the signature Kuran eyes, crimson, red and blue. Rido's love for his sister, Juri Kuran, turned into something of an obsession so much so that he even drank her blood. While feeding is usually a sensual act for both the parties involved, Juri cries out in pain for her lover, Haruko Kuran, to help her. Hearing his younger brother's name from his lover's lips activated his sadistic side, and he enjoyed her screams. Not caring about anyone else but his own selfish interests and desires, Rido will go to any extent to make them come true even if it means stepping on or over his near and dear. After all, he killed his parents because they wouldn't let him marry his sister and made sure to drink their blood to absorb their powers. Seeing that Juri is never going to love him, Rido, pretending to bless her and Haruko's firstborn child, arrives and disappears with the infant. His nephew, named Kaname Kuran after their ancestor, is sacrificed to revive this said vampire so that Rido can drain him of his blood, thereby becoming even more powerful. He doesn't bat an eye as he slices through their little baby. Hunger for power and a primal need to satisfy any and every desire is basically what drives Rido Kuran. Any strong-willed woman out there better not catch Rido's attention. If you think you can outrun on him, remember, this handsome 3,000-plus-year-old vampire loves a good chase. Giliola Garadi Strike the Blood A mature, curvy beauty, Giliola Garadi is one of the antagonists of Strike the Blood, a T-type vampire. Garadi possesses some special powers that make her just as deadly as some of our above vampiric friends. Perhaps Giliola's more popular ability is the bee attack, known as Aguijan. She can also use intelligent familiars as weapons and even summon them to launch attacks on her opponents. Her Rosa Zombie Maker, Beast Vassal, is in the shape of a whip that can control and manipulate the minds it latches onto. Giliola's powers aren't surprising, she's from the bloodline of Giada, the third primogenitor, one of the oldest vampires who existed. Before being imprisoned in the prison barrier, the violet-haired enchantress was a high-class prostitute, the favorite of all the royals and nobles. But after an affair with the crown prince went public, the rest of the royal members planned to simply do away with her. Enraged at this, Garadi went into a killing frenzy, annihilating everyone, even the prince. It's at this point we hear of her passion for crimes. Decking herself in the skimpiest of lingerie, covered only by a long coat, Giliola Garadi uses her well-endowed assets to her advantage. If uh, you ever find yourself face to face, try not to um, get distracted. <laughs> if you do, well, at least you'll have died with a happy memory. Shinobu Oshino Monogatari Series Another human princess turned vampire? Simply because she was too pure and kind-hearted, Shinobu Oshino of the Monogatari series will break your heart. Known for her unrivaled beauty in her kingdom, people always lined up to catch a glimpse of the heavenly princess. While everyone who saw her left in bliss, Shinobu was not happy. She wanted everyone to see her personality and character. Seeing her saddened state, a witch decided to help Oshino by turning her physical body invisible. This turned out to be disastrous. The goodness of her heart was so pure that it revealed a bright light spreading the entire kingdom. Astonished at this, everyone around her felt compelled to offer Shinobu their most valuable things. What started as material objects soon turned into more gruesome gifts, lives of themselves and their children, and sometimes what they believed to be more valuable, like a singer's tongue, an artist's hands, and so on. Heartbroken at the unexpected result, Shinobu ran away, hoping to find a cure to end this curse. She soon chanced upon a vampire and sought his help only to be disappointed. Finally, she asked the older vampire to turn her, in hopes that she'd at least be able to eat the corpses of people who gave their lives for her. 
but she has some kick-ass powers that would do you good to be aware of, as with a vampire, she can heal quickly, as well as use her blood to heal others. In a messy fight where Koyomi Araragi is sliced in half by the Black Hanakawa, Shinobu rips her arm off and uses her blood to bring him back to life. Satisfied that everything is where it should be, she puts the severed limb back in its socket, fully functional again. And of course, incredible strength, can grow wings, jump back in time, drain energy by sucking blood, and use shadows as a tool to enter and exit places. <laughs> the ultimate surprise attack. Miyabi Higanjima The main villain of Higanjima, Miyabi, is one vampire you don't want to meet under any circumstances. A human who lived during World War II, he was infected by a virus that turned him into a bloodthirsty fang. Losing every shred of humanity, Miyabi soon set out to build himself an army of immortal bloodsuckers, with the goal of ruling the world one day. And he's not afraid to use whatever means to get there. Being the original source of whatever infection affected him, Miyabi is the most powerful of his vampire horde. Unlike the traditional vampires, his minions have a more mutant-esque figure. Aside from the usual traits that come with being a vampire, his mind-manipulating abilities can force another to infect others, turning them into vampires. After his first frenzied turning of people, Miyabi had been sealed, but Atsushi Miyamoto unknowingly freed him, who in turn thanked him by raping his fiancée right in front of Atsushi and draining her completely. Just another example of Miyabi's brutal, remorseless, and callous character. Despite all of these, he shows intelligence that's in stark contrast to his barbaric nature. Miyabi plans on releasing a vampire virus to infect the whole world, and he succeeds. He'd be a perfect fit alongside Batman's villains. Yevgraf, Sirius, the Jaeger. In Yevgraf's drive to attain the ultimate power of the Ark and become one with the Sirius, he goes to extreme levels. Slashing, killing, and basically wiping out everyone that stands in his path of existence, Yevgraf shows no mercy, and he has the look to go with it, too. Cutting a dashing figure with Dracula-like clothing, Yevgraf has grayish shoulder-length hair and red eyes with claw-like hands. Tall and well-built, he also has a feathery coat to complete his ensemble. His calm voice, even when slicing through his victims, only adds to the eeriness of his wicked character. Yevgraf also seems to have the ability to turn people into vampires, as is apparent when Mikhail becomes one. Born as a powerful royal vampire, he possesses all the abilities of one. When he finally gets his hand on the Ark of Sirius and consumes it, Yevgraf turns into a heinous monster, with the Ark taking its place in one of his eyes. Pure muscle rips his clothes apart as bat-like wings emerge from his back. Yevgraf's normal vampire teeth elongate and take on a tusk-like form. And it goes without saying that this enhanced form comes with its enhanced abilities, one of which was the regrowing of limbs, courtesy of the Ark. Unfortunately, Lord Yev is unable to contain the immense power of the Ark of Sirius, and the final battle between him, Yuli, and Mikhail becomes the final blow for him to disintegrate into nothingness. And a good thing, too. Wouldn't want an immortal walking nuclear bomb to go batshit. Shaltir Bloodfallen, Overlord Known fondly as the Bloody Valkyrie, Shaltir is one of the seven floor guardians of the Tomb of Nazarick. As opposed to the usual female vampires, Shaltir Bloodfallen is diminutive in stature, with wide hips and a rather generous bottom. She appears as a well-dressed young girl of around 14 or 15 years of age, created by Pyrrhon Cinco, one of the 41 supreme beings, to fulfill his perverse erotic wishes. As such, Shaltir possesses all the qualities that make her a dangerous seductress. Her crimson eyes seem to always have a suggestive note to it, while her pale skin has a beautiful shimmer. Unsurprisingly, she's shamelessly flirting with anyone and everyone, not holding back when someone takes her fancy, mostly an undead, since necrophilia is one of her more tolerable attributes. But don't let her supposedly careless character fool you. Shaltir's attention to detail and seriousness when it comes to her responsibilities are what make her deadly, a true vampire. She possesses unnatural abilities that give even Ains a run for his money. As much as Bloodfallen loves necrophilia, she's equally invested in sadomasochism. She's also a master in torture, breaking down her opponents mentally and psychologically while deriving pure thrill and ecstasy from it. Following all the orders by her lord Ains to the T, Shaltir thrives in the chase of whichever unfortunate soul is doomed to be the latest victim. But expose her to a little too much blood, and she turns into a frenzied monster that stops at nothing until her bloodlust is satiated. Her true monster form, a cavernous mouth filled with razor-sharp teeth, and an abnormally long tongue that hangs out, is enough to give the adults nightmares. Let's maybe just focus on not getting on the bad side of Ains or even the good side of Shaltir. Kane, Nightwalker the Midnight Detective. Kane is one of the original vampires of Transylvania and, hence, has pretty much all those archaic traditions and characteristics. For example, he believes that humans are just cattle for the vampires to prey on and toy with. This is a belief that he shared with his progeny and the protagonist of Nightwalker, the Midnight Detective, Shido. 
He also has an insatiable lust of, should we say, an urge to control, sort of like a dom-sub relationship for Shido. This obsessive possessiveness coupled with his general brutality that only seemed to increase over the years had forced Shido to escape. Unfortunately, Kane is one persistent sire and continues to wreak havoc in Shido's life. An ancient vampire, he's endowed with all the traditional skills that make them the apex predators. But this is Kane we're talking about. That's gotta be that extra flavor. <laughs> he doesn't disappoint. Kane can create a force field around to defend himself while his hair can grow long as a weapon to trap opponents. Of course, his nails work very well as sharp claws. After all, it was with those that he wounded Ryo, forcing Shido to turn her. The blow was fatal. Mind control abilities are not that uncommon among vampires, but the kind of taking over Shido's mind could also be due to the fact that they're the sire and progeny. Probably the deadliest trait of Kane is his ability to manipulate reality and create illusions to make his victims go through their worst fears as if it really is happening. Just pray that you don't catch the fancy of this centuries-old vampire. Deacon Frost, Marvel Anime, Blade, a brilliant doctor. Deacon Frost's story will have you feeling sympathy for the mad scientist. Well, hmm, almost. Living with his equally intelligent son Edgar, the father-son duo had a good life, until a vampire attack killed his son. Seeing as the cops were trying to cover up the whole case, Frost decides to take matters into his own hands. And it's from here that Deacon Frost's humanity slowly starts to ebb away. Joining a group of vampire hunters, the ingenious doctor's mind becomes way too interested in vampiric features and traits. After his successful turning into a vampire with powers that were on par with the pure bloods, Frost continues in his goal of eradicating the entire vampire race. And for that, he created a group called the Existence, who were ready to do anything at a look or nod from Frost. Just like his name, Deacon shows no remorse or feels any guilt when decimating anything blocking his way. But he doesn't always resort to brute strength. Frost has proven that he's just as skilled in psychologically manipulating and breaking his victims down. As was obvious from his dealings with Blade, the Daywalker, and the fact that he does all of this in a calm, quiet way, barely raising his voice, only adds to Deacon Frost's sinister and terrifying character. Lord Ivanovich, Dance in the Vampire Bund If there's a character in Dance in the Vampire Bund that gives a total villain vibe, it's Lord Ivanovich. His overall look appears to be inspired by the demon Baphomet. If that doesn't stop someone from staying the hell away from this guy, his death stare probably would. He's tall, heavily built, with aggressive eyes, and a demeanor that screams, don't cross my path or you'll lose all your blood. The history of the world is full of unnecessary wars among people of different religions, languages, and ethnicities, often occurring from the skepticism and mistrust of the other side. Dance in the Vampire Bund is a story along the same lines. Princess Mina of the Vampires wants peace and harmony between humans and vampires, but the extremists of either side sabotage her efforts. One of those extremists is Lord Ivanovich. He's revealed to be none other than Gregory Rasputin, who had a great influence on the Romanov family of Imperial Russia. But he sold their lives and became a vampire. And now he hunts Mina and her werewolf protector Akira for her blood. He mercilessly attacks, tortures, and kills innocent humans, werewolves, and vampires in his pursuit of Mina. He's definitely a guy to maintain a distance from. Who'd want to cross paths with undead Rasputin? Anyway, ugh. Dio Brando Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Dio Brando is a vampire who can stop time itself. The archenemy of the Joester family. His one purpose in life is to terminate the Joester clan from the face of the earth. He was brought up in an abusive household under the tyranny of an abusive alcoholic father, who also worked his mother to death. His father was such a degenerate that he would sell his late wife's clothes for a pint of booze. However, despite this backstory, Jojo's Bizarre Adventures doesn't fall into the clichés of making its villain a victim of circumstance. Dio had a rough childhood, but there was always a type of villainy between his eyes, looking for an opportunity to come out. Dio is a megalomaniac with a god complex. His personality reeks of arrogance, insanity, and overconfidence. In his pursuits, he doesn't hesitate to trample over anyone or give up humanity to achieve immortality. Dio has just one need, power. As the series progresses, he resorts to all kinds of horrific activities to satisfy his hunger for power. As an audience, one can't help but be fascinated by the extremely intriguing personality of Dio Brando, to the point that we want to find virtues in him. Maybe he respected his mother, maybe he was heartbroken and got sucked into evil. He was abused by his father, so he killed him. In this nature versus nurture debate around Dio Brando, nothing can be said for sure. Except one thing, <laughs> you'd want to stay the hell away from him. Count Dracula, Castlevania What do you do when the one person who was the most dear to you gets taken most horrifically? Hmm? Well, if you were Count Dracula, then you'd wage a war to end the existence of humanity for good. Netflix's Castlevania became one of the popular anime when it dropped, paving the way for more American-styled animation projects. 
Castlevania is about the great war between the evil army of Vlad Dracula Tepes and the resistance led by Trevor Belmont, Sifes, and Dracula's son, Alucard Tepes. It's well known that Bram Stoker's Dracula was inspired by the cruel ruler of Valachia, Vlad Dracula. He was a brutal ruler, famous for granting his enemies an unimaginably painful death. He would impale people, so they die slowly, experiencing gruesome pain. And then he'd stack the corpses in line as a warning to others. Castlevania directly takes the historical figure and adds a magical twist. Count Dracula is a powerful vampire, killing people mercilessly if found convenient. He's tall, aggressive, yet profound, and good with words. He lives in a huge castle with priceless books. One day, he's visited by an enthusiastic learner, Lisa, a human. He tries to intimidate her, but she's unflinching and doesn't get affected by Dracula's towering presence. He eventually falls in love with her. They get married and have a son, Alucard Tepes. But when Dracula is out in his quest for knowledge, his wife is falsely accused of witchcraft and burned at a stake. Furious, Dracula warns the people of Valachia and gives them one year to prepare until he returns with an army to wipe them out. Thus begins the bloody war. Dracula is a complicated character. He's mostly evil, but manages to find his humanity back. He loves with all his heart, and he hates with all his heart. He eventually gets solace and lets his son put a stake through his heart. Elizabeth Bathory, Castlevania Nocturne. Ranked at 9 is one of the most important characters of Castlevania Nocturne, and we do have a reason for that. Based on the infamous Hungarian serial killer of the 16th century, Elizabeth Bathory is the queen of vampires in the anime series. Deemed as the incarnation of the Egyptian goddess of war, Sekhmet, Elizabeth aspires to transform the world into that of eternal darkness so that the race of vampires can thrive and live freely. Known for her sadistic tendencies, Bathory is a living yet fictional embodiment of terror. So let's talk about her powers at length. Besides the usual vampire abilities of immortality and superhuman strength, the Queen of the Vampires has the power to levitate. Along with this, she's capable of using dark magic, courtesy of the vampire royalty. Since she holds a supreme position, Bathory's powers are equally powerful. For instance, she can summon a solar eclipse at any given point in time. Moreover, she can transform into a horrifying bestial being with leonine features, a reference to Sekhmet's appearance as the lion-headed goddess. This makes her immune to almost every attack, which includes Richter Belmont's whip. In this form, she can erect barriers to defend herself from attacks, as well as use telekinesis to subdue her enemies. By the way, did you notice Bathory's appearance in the series is similar to another famous vampire antagonist in anime? <laughs> Keep watching to know who that is. Razel, Noblesse. The anime world has a special affinity with stoic, handsome heroes, wielding within themselves an incredible amount of power. Our next vampire, Razel, from the show Noblesse, falls under the same category. He's slender and tall, has the scarlet red eyes of high-born pure blood, and holds a calm and regal demeanor. However, it's his raw and tempestuous power that makes him truly exceptional, making even his enemies bow in respect. Razel is a noble of Lucadonia, which means that he's a powerful being and responsible for being the protector of nobles. He wakes up from a slumber of 820 years into the modern world. Naturally, he's surprised to see all the changes in the world. He goes to a school where he's reunited with his loyal servant and friend, Frankenstein, who is oddly the principal of that school. Rizal decides to enroll in that school as a student to learn the ways of the modern world. Soon, he befriends fellow students Shinwu, Ikan, and Yuna. Together, they hunt to uncover the secrets of a secret organization that's been responsible for mysterious events, while in the same process also uncovering the truth of Ray's past. As interesting as the setting of the show is, the characters are equally matched. The duo of Rizal and Frankenstein, along with their human counterparts, combat many enemies in their pursuit. In that, we find out about Rizal's amazing powers. Apart from sleeping for 820 years, he can also use mind control, telekinesis, and even mind reading. He can rip apart his enemies, limb by limb, and become a ruthless judge and executioner when necessary. It's wise to stay out of his and his friend's path, because disrespecting or antagonizing Razel wrongly shall be paid in blood. Dmitry Maximov Night Warriors, Darkstalker's Revenge Dmitry Maximov is one of the most powerful characters in Night Warriors, Darkstalker's Revenge series. He's capable of terrible things if you trespass into his palace looking for treasure, and even if you didn't, he might come for your blood on a full moon. Dmitry is a power-hungry creature who challenges the ruler of Mackay for the throne. However, due to his arrogance, he lost the battle and then spent a century of humiliation in his castle. He was drained out of his power, but slowly, slowly started to regain it. 
He feasted on people who came for his treasure and turned them into his slave vampires, serving all his whims. He has a particular taste for beauty. He likes to look good and smell good. Oh, and he also likes to taste good, especially if they are young, attractive women. Like Dracula, he holds humans in low regard, deeming them as inferior creatures, but loves their taste. Hmm, human blood for him is like the most exquisite wine. Sort of what chicken is to us, humans are for him. With time, he's able to gain most of his power and wants to attack Mackay's throne again and take over from Morrigan Ainsland, but is unexpectedly intruded by an alien invader, Pyron. But for the apex vampire like Dimitri, aliens are just another item on the menu. Wilhelm Ehrenberg dies Irai Wilhelm Ehrenberg is an antagonist of dark origins, born out of incest. His childhood was a nightmare, filled with poverty and abuse. His father, who was alcoholic and abusive, fathered Wilhelm with his own daughter. He eventually killed his family and lived as a serial killer in Berlin. That's already quite an intriguing story for a villain, but Wilhelm's dance with the dark doesn't stop here. During a fierce battle with a fellow killer, he's spotted by a black round table member, Reinhard Heydrich. With Heydrich's influence, Wilhelm becomes even more ambitious and evil. He joined the Nazi SS Corps consisting of convicted criminals and took part in mass killings for their rituals, with whose help he desired to become an immortal in the form of a vampire. After the end of the war, he was to wait for 60 years to finally create mayhem in Suwahara City in Japan and kickstarting the events of Dai's Irai and kickstarting the events of Dai's Irai. Now it's up to the protagonist of the anime, Ren Fuji, to stop the irrationality and evil that's befallen Suwahara City and restore normalcy. Wilhelm is a force of destruction, with the sole intention of perpetuating atrocities upon others. With his superhuman strength, enhanced senses, regeneration power, and immortality, he indulges in merciless killings. All Wilhelm seeks is chaos and misery and inflicts unimaginable pain on innocents. What's more terrible is that his character is inspired by real people from World War II, as the Dulwanger unit of convicted killers existed who inflicted terrible torture on thousands of civilians. Good thing that those guys are dead. Still, the concept of a Nazi serial killer vampire who is also a megalomaniac lunatic is a thing of nightmare in the truest sense of the word. Carmilla Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust Lady Carmilla is a being of antiquity who's lived for thousands of years. Her ancestry is that of nobility, coming from a lineage of high-born aristocrats. Due to her relationship with the sacred ancestor, she reigned for 5,000 years with the weapon of torture, pain, and cruelty, earning the title of Bloody Countess. Her appearance is towering. She's tall, slender, and quite good-looking, to be frank. She wears a vermilion red gown that leaves her upper body slightly uncovered. Her backstory reveals that due to her bloodlust, she was put to sleep by the Vampire King. However, her spirit kept looming around the castle for centuries, haunting the people. She found a way to regain full consciousness, but that would require a sort of sacrifice of Charlotte, who, due to her desire to be with her lover, gets tricked and seduced into the castle. Charlotte's parents hire the vampire hunter Dee to bring their daughter to safety, hence setting up the conflict and battle of the film. Dee is well aware that Lady Carmilla is extremely powerful with her abilities of mind control, telepathy, illusion, and deception, and her gaining full power would mean the destruction of the known world. Lady Carmilla's character is based on the 1872 novella Carmilla, which is one of the earliest works of vampire fiction. The film follows the same themes along the lines of the novella, a creepy story of an evil female vampire preying on young women. For Lady Carmilla, human life has no value other than a delicacy. Incognito Helsing 2001 Helsing was one of the most popular anime of the early 2000s. Released in 2001, it told the story of the Helsing family's fight against the undead creatures 100 years after Van Helsing's death. The Helsings have to fight many formidable foes, but the most difficult one came from the dark continent of Africa. Incognito is the main antagonist of the anime, and like a true villain, he's cruel, sadistic, and masochistic. He mercilessly devours and decapitates innocent people, laughs maniacally upon committing heinous deeds, and shows no remorse about it. He has the sole purpose of bringing ruin to the world. He serves an unknown master and after his appearance in the anime, becomes the sworn enemy of the Helsing family. Not only is he able to go hand-to-hand -hand with Alucard, but he's also a brilliant tactician who can deceive even the best of the undead hunters. To bring chaos and destruction, he creates the freak chip that can create impure vampires to cause havoc in England. He derives weird pleasure not only in giving pain, but also in receiving it. That's one hell of a freaky thing for a character, but it makes Incognito terrifying for people who can't match him and helplessly watch themselves get killed mercilessly in the most gruesome way. 
Kane Nightlord, Trinity Blood. The main antagonist of Trinity Blood is an entity full of surprises. Also known as Krasnik-01, Kane is a synthetically engineered anthropomorphic entity that was once a major figure in the Mars colonization project. Kane was known to be a good, gentle soul who was adored as a respectable leader in the team. However, after a major accident, he was administered a dosage of Krasnik Bacillus nanomachines to resuscitate him. This resulted in the nanomachines integrating with his body and thus turning him into a vampirish entity that calls itself Krasnik-01. So, what's the difference between Kane's former self and his Krasnik transformation? Well, the distinctions are many. When it comes to physical capabilities, Kane possesses superhuman strength and can release a destructive invisible force using his hands. However, his behavior is quite out of the ordinary. Kane's former self harbored much hatred towards humanity for his artificial birth. Yet, unlike his associates, Kane preferred to keep his opinion to his own self. At the same time, his warm and candid nature was indeed a genuine attribute of his personality. Eventually, this gets morphed into a childlike behavior when Kane's body gets integrated with the Krasnik nanomachines. Not only did his physique undergo a massive change, but it also affected his psyche to a great extent. The Krasnik particles are meant to turn the host body into a vampire that would hunt down other vampires. This attribute surfaced in Kane's personality as well. On top of that, the contradiction between the Krasnik tendencies and his warm and kind-hearted nature resulted in the emergence of odd behavioral patterns. The new Kane is incapable of experiencing remorse and guilt, nor does he understand the difference between good and bad. His associates, Abel and Seth, too underwent the Krasnik treatment, and while their goal is to exterminate vampires, Kane hopes to erase every living creature on Earth. This suggests that his Krasnik tendencies are far stronger than that of his associates. So, how powerful can Kane be when in his Krasnik self? Let's find out. The fact that he was the only one to fuse 100% with the Krasnik Bacillus justifies the sheer supremacy that Kane has in terms of powers and abilities. In his Krasnik form, which is too hideous to be true, Kane possesses phenomenal regenerative capabilities. Besides this, his stamina, strength, and agility increased manifold. His combat techniques are further strengthened with the help of the black lance that appears in his hands during his transformation. A biblical reference to the Spear of Longinus, this lance is an indispensable part of Kane's fighting style. Additionally, he can change his physical form into a black liquid and can reconstitute himself at any given point in time. In short, it'd be quite a stiff challenge for someone else to take down the likes of Krasnik-01. D. Vampire Hunter D. As the name of the anime says out loud, D is a vampire hunter who gets into dangerous situations to save people from blood-sucking predators. He has a stoic demeanor, is unflinching in the face of adversity, and seldom loses his cool. A big reason for his composed personality is his concentrated power, superior skills, and knowledge, which is generally assumed to be more than his fellow vampire hunters. He is a Dampir, a mixed breed in the world of anime. He's half human and half vampire, assumed to be fathered by the sacred ancestor himself during his experiments with interbreeding to halt the decline of nobility. D had a twin brother, whose personality was opposite to his, and who eventually became D's enemy due to his affinity for cruelty. The vampire hunter's cold and distant personality is probably a result of great loss, which is not conveyed, but supposedly it's his mother. D is over 10,000 years old. He has superhuman strength and speed, which is generally used to protect innocent people. If he ever decides to pivot toward the villains, everyone's doomed, as he isn't just strong but can also regenerate and resurrect himself if destroyed. Oh, and did we mention that he can't be killed? Yeah, D is also an immortal, but while he's certainly all-powerful, coming across him isn't going to threaten your life unless you're a noble. Our top entry isn't as kind or caring as D, considering he used to be a villain himself. Alucard, Helsing, Ultimate Alucard is an enigma of a character. He's the loyal butler of the Helsing family, but is a vampire himself. A few hundred years ago, while he was fighting the Ottomans, he believed that God had abandoned him while being executed. So, he turns his back on humanity and begins a new, blood-sucking life. He's believed to be the most powerful vampire, but was defeated by Abraham van Helsing. And now, because of that defeat, he's sworn to serve the Helsing family and aid them in their fight against the undead supernatural creatures. Alucard might have left the dark side, but he's still one of the most powerful characters of Helsing. His killings are highly dramatic and stylized, showing his lack of fear and invulnerability. He generally taunts his enemies about their inferior status and relative weakness, openly flaunting his arrogance. He'd let his opponents attack him and would get shredded by weapons, giving an illusion of being defeated and dead. But eventually, he rises, laughing at the naivety of his enemies before showing them his impressive gunslinging. He's quite handy with his twin large caliber handguns, blasting dozens of faces at once while smiling egotistically. He has all the qualities of being a cool villain, but thankfully he's on the good side now. But that's not how it was. 
He used to be the sadistic impaler Vlad Dracula himself, before getting defeated by Van Helsing and now is known as Alucard. However, when the situation demands, he resorts to older ways without hesitation. Marvelous verdict. And that's our list of the 40 most kick-ass, bloodthirsty, maniacal and murder-friendly vampires in all of anime. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you guys in the next one.